I selected Alina Sablehouse, flutist in the symphonic band, who's doing tremendous things and winning scholarships left and right and, and, and running like the wind with her musical talents on flute. And Tyler Bogue, who is a fine musician in his own right, as well as a very uniquely gifted young composer. When Tyler got home from the band banquet, as I understand it, last year, he felt a wealth of gratitude to the Love family, and that very night began to pen a thank you note, several notes, in the form of a symphony. And the symphony was born that night, if I understand the story correctly. And so tonight, we're fortunate as a symphonic band to perform this work for the first time ever, and for you to see it, hear it unveiled. This is a memory of beloved Jacob Love, who I was blessed to instruct for four years. And this work is a beautiful tribute to him. I won't speak about it, I want you to hear from the composer. Uh, but I do want to point out before I welcome Tyler to speak a few words about the composition to you. I want to thank two uh, musicians who have come in specifically for the performance of this work. Tyler saw fit since Mrs. Kathy Griffith, former assistant director of bands, and you remember as director of orchestras at Bowen Park Middle School, since she stood beside Jacob for four years, that, that he included a cello solo and a cello part in the symphony. And so Kathy is here, as you see her on stage, joining us, and we're grateful, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. And just because it wouldn't have been complete without it, and Tyler has a tremendous musical judgment, he folded in a harp and happened to have a family friend in the form of Katie Crombez. Uh, she's a senior in piano performance at Madonna, and she was kind enough to come out and share her musical gift on the harp tonight. We welcome her. And so just to give you a little further insight before we open the concert with Love Speaks. I'd like you to hear from composer Tyler Bolk. Will you welcome him to the podium? Good evening. Um, where do I even begin? So, as Mr. Manning said, this began back in June. And I was, you know, granted with the Love Scholarship uh, a sum enough to take me to Western, who has a composition summer program. I went to Western for three weeks, two weeks, two weeks, and worked purely on this. Was a, I spent two weeks doing nothing else but working on this. And then I came home and I worked more on it. And I worked on it through school, I worked on it through the first semester, and then I brought it to Mr. attention. And I had no idea where it would take me. I just, I, I wanted him to see it because it's, it's an honor of, you know, a student he had and a student he loved. It's, he, he can attest that he loves most of everybody in the band. But Jake is special. Jake was special. Jake was the, um, the center snare for the drum line for our marching band when he was a senior in high school. And very early in his senior year, Jake was diagnosed with aplastic anemia. And towards the end of his, high school, of his senior year, right after his, his senior year finished, Jake passed away. And it really was, I never knew Jake personally, and I'm sad to say that I don't, because all the stories I've heard, Jake was an incredible, incredible human being. You know, not only did he love everybody in the band, but he loved music just as equally. And he, he was doing what he loved, and that was being with his friends, and supporting his friends, and loving every moment on the instrument. So, I figured what better way to give back to the Love family and to Jake than through music. So, the, um, the symphony itself is in five moments. I figured the best way to celebrate someone's life is to show it in a way that we can all understand. You know, music is the universal language, they say. So you don't need to know Jake or to have met Jake to understand what's going on in music. So we begin at his very earliest moments from birth. And that's movement one. Movement one very simple, it's very pure, and it represents Jake, a very young child. And the Love family actually named each one of the movements. If, if you see in your page tonight, each one of the movements is named specifically by Jake's parents. Uh, a buddy for Billy. Billy is Jake's older brother. He was the first year tubist when he was in the, um, the Triathlon Symphonic Band. 
and he comes back and works with our tuba players during marching season. And you'll hear in the fourth movement a solo played on the tuba to represent Billy. Now the second movement is much more upbeat, much more lighthearted, and it's just a lot more playful because the second movement, you know, brown eyes and drum beats, is early childhood. So this is Jake as a young toddler, you know, as most of us do. We bang on pots and pans and make noises as a young kid, but Jake took an affinity to it and turned them into rhythms, which most of us can't do. So we have brown eyes and drum beats. Then we move on to middle school and high school. And the third movement is the longest movement because it's just, it's an expanse of a large portion of Jake's life. It's split into four sections. The first is sort of the nervous excitement, end of middle school, into high school. And at the very end of this, this passage, it all expands into a massive pause and there's dead silence. And we go on to fanfare. And every year when the freshmen walk into the building, the seniors line up and welcome the freshmen to Troy High. And so I wrote a fanfare to go along with the introduction to Troy High. That's the second portion. The third portion focuses on what high school is really like. It's just the excitement, the happiness, and the whole piece, I didn't mention this, you know, every year since the seniors were freshmen, they've been granted love scholarships. So I folded in people who've won the scholarship as soloists in the piece. So you'll have Robbie Coring on French Horn. He's got a solo through it. I believe fifth movement. Oh, yeah, Sable House, who won it with me this year on the flute. Uh, Sarah Smith on piccolo. Brendan Kelly, who's way in the back on the trumpet. He actually plays a duet with his twin brother, who's over there in the alto sax section. Uh, who am I missing? I'm missing one. And of course, Emily Schramm. Um, Emily opens the piece on the Sum solo. And all, all four of them are fantastic musicians. They're, I have had such an honor working with them, and they, they play beautifully. I can't imagine having you know, my music played by anybody more talented and more expressive than they are. Uh, fourth move, I guess, how do we finish off the third movement? When Jake was in high school, he, as, you know, as the head of the drum line, there was a piece that he really, really wanted to play. And it was hard. It's, it's called Double Beat. And so you'll see, we have our marching percussion equipment lined up in the front. Our percussion are going to run to the front of the stage and play you double beat to finish off the third movement in honor of Jake. The fourth movement's a little bit, it's just a little bit, it's a little bit, it's, it's more on the sad side. It's, this is Jake, you know, Jake asked specifically to remember him not when he was sick, but when he was well and when he loved each one of us. So I don't focus a ton on the fourth movement, but it's a representation of just how tragic his situation was. And then we get to the fifth movement. And the fifth movement is Jacob's, Jacob's Ladder. That's the moment you hear throughout. Uh, the piano has it, the trombones have it, it's all over the place. Because not only does a ladder represent ascension, but Jacob's Ladder. I mean, how, how more perfect could you get of a piece? So uh, over top of Jake's theme, which you'll hear throughout the whole piece, is folded in Jacob's Ladder. And Jake did graduate from Troy High. In the fourth movement, you'll hear a counter line to my melody, which is Mr. Nuttick's melody, for uh, the Troy High alma mater. I took our alma mater and fixed it up so it would fit well with the melody I am in. And so you get a little hint of everything. And in Jake's final moments, you get, you can just get, you feel the tragedy that, you know, it's such a horrible loss. We have no idea who he would have been. And he made it through, but we can only imagine how many wonderful things he'd be doing. And Mr. Love put it perfectly. They really wanted Jake, after he came home from the hospital, to walk back through the doors of the Troy High Band, but he never did. But this is this is his opportunity, and tonight he's with each one of us. So please enjoy Love Speaks, son of Jacob Joel Love. <laughs> 